What happened to you when you were young that you didn't understand until years later? When I was 6 and my brother was 4 we used to walk to our cousin's house which was 2 houses down. One evening, we asked our mother if we could go over and she said yes and lets us walk over by ourselves. While we are walking, this car drives up to us and asks if we knew where the nearest McDonald's was and if we'd like to come with him. I told him we weren't allowed to eat McDonald's without our mother's permission and turned to get her to ask if we were allowed. She was already running outside to get us when the car sped off. I was around 15 when I was reminiscing with my family and she brought it up. Creepy realization. I have a similar one mentioned in this thread. I was in our front yard playing. This guy pulls up across the street and yes my name and says my mom told him to pick me up. I'm like why would she do that? She's just inside the house. So I ask. Do you have the phrase, because my mom told me, if she sends someone to pick me up from school, she'll give them a secret code phrase. Catch ya later, alligator, for those curious. He just looked at me, and told me to get in again. I told him I was sorry, but I wasn't allowed to go, unless he knew the code phrase. Then my mom swoops out of the house, picks me up, and he takes off. I was super excited because I got to meet a police officer a short while later and he let me look at his police car. Dad used to have a shop in the basement where he would work on things in the evening. He used to smoke while he was down there and I wasn't allowed to be in the shop because smoke is bad for kids. I used to sneak down covered style sometimes and he'd catch me and chew me out all while laughing and smiling. The smoke smelled different than regular smoke, but I was little and didn't think much of it. Years later when I first, knowingly, smell pot, I instantly recognized the smell. Dad used to smoke pot in the basement every night. This really reminds me of something too. It wasn't someone we knew I think, just a stranger on the street, but one day I asked one of my parents what weird kind of cigarette that person was smoking, and they said it was a herbal cigarette. It was several years later, well after I'd been taught about weed, that I suddenly put two and two together. That's actually a clever response. I was about 5, 6 years old in a Calder store, New England. My mom and I were on the second floor, and I was a couple of steps behind her. I thought I saw her go down the escalator, so I did too to catch up. I couldn't find her. I looked around for a while fruitlessly. I was eventually approached by a lady who looked to be about 40 in a brown leather jacket. She asked if I was lost. She said she was a police officer and that my mom was outside. She led me toward the front entrance as my mom called for me from the second floor. I went to my mom. Unless I remembered some details incorrectly, I think I was about to get kidnapped. This fact occurred to me when I was about 20. I just thought how nobody in this thread actually got kidnapped. Then I realized it would be irrelevant to the question and they probably wouldn't be able to tell anyone. I was kidnapped. By accident. And only for about 10 minutes. I got in the wrong car in a parking lot. Looked just like my mom's. And the lady didn't notice I was lying down in the back seat. Until I popped up and said, you're not mommy. I was 5 or 6. My mom was talking to someone in the grocery store. And I was bored. It was 1981. And everyone knew everyone where I lived. The lady almost crashed the car and drove like a madwoman back to the store, maybe three blocks. My mom and half the store clerks were walking around the parking lot yelling my name. I don't remember a whole lot, but no one called the cops. The lady and my mom nervously laughed about it, and my mom didn't let me out of her sight for about six months, which I found incredibly annoying. My parents divorce. My mother suffers from bipolar disorder, and 20 plus years ago the psychiatric community was fragmented in terms of how to properly medicate it. Without proper medication and good access to mental health, my mother was not only suicidal and constantly depressed, but she had a bad spending habit. During her bouts of mania, she would go on shopping sprees to the tune of $10,000 $20,000, buying all kinds of useless crap we didn't need and couldn't afford. She'd put it all on credit cards. There were quite a few times growing up that I recall my dad loading bags and bags of crap into his pickup truck and carting my brother and me to the mall 
and standing in line for hours returning the stuff. When my dad finally had enough, he committed my mother and then filed for divorce. She'd threatened to kill herself if he ever left her. For many years I had a great deal of animosity towards my dad because I thought he had abandoned mom when she needed him the most. He did everything in his power to try and help her, not that she didn't want the help, but nobody he took her to could get her on the right medication. I was well into my 20s before realizing he made the decision he thought was best for me and my brother, though he made a lot of mistakes on his own, too. I guess I came to the understanding that my dad didn't want to take the chance that my mother's illness would cause irreparable damage to us. Oh ho yeah, he definitely did the right thing by not subjecting you guys to her erratic behavior. Prime developmental years there, having somebody scream at you for stupid little things. The smallest things would cause her to lose control. Growing up, we thought it was normal for moms to freak out over children mixing board game pieces or turning the act down at night when it got too hot. Anything that was out of the ordinary would either send her into a rage or cause her to cry for hours on end. Don't get me wrong, my mother worked a full time job and always made sure the house was clean. We were fed and homework was done, but some days we'd leave for school and she'd be in bed, only to return that afternoon and find her still in bed. She's been on the correct medication for about 15 years now. Though I still witness a struggle with small bouts of mania and depression, it has been great watching her work so hard to get on the right medication and remain positive. The bullying at elementary school. I couldn't wrap my young brain around it at the time. Why are these crap heads so mean to me every day? I realize now that either they just didn't know any better and didn't realize the weight of their actions or their lives at home were fricked. I had an incident like this in the first grade. I was standing in line after recess and a kid wanted my spot since I was in the front. He shoved me into a brick wall to R right and took my spot. I didn't want to become me a target so I shoved him and got into line. The teacher watching recess runs up screaming at me. I try to explain, but I'm a child and wasn't great with phrasing yet. I got three words out and she yelled louder, are you talking back to me? She then had me stand against the wall and came and got me later and took me to my home room. No one would listen to me or hear my side of it. This kind of thing happened to me four years at my elementary school. I think it has to do with me being timid in some situations. I stand up for myself, but I just don't have that thing other males have. I'm just not aggressive. And I think it has to do with why I never feel the need to explain myself or talk about myself. I just assume no one will listen or want to hear it. That makes me mad just reading that. This is what I think of whenever I hear the phrase I don't care who started it. I didn't understand why my older brother oddly giggled when he'd hear the word BJ in a movie. I thought it was some kind of bank robbery thing. You can see my confusion. Fast forward two years off. Heh heh heh. I had older cousins that would do the same, but then convince the younger kids that a toy was a type of candy, so us younger kids would go up to our parents asking if we could have some toys. Good times. Two of my younger, 9 or 10 ish female cousins overheard me, 16, talking on the phone to a friend of mine, referring to a lady friend as a slut. They asked what a slut was, so naturally I told them that a slut was what we called really popular girls in high school. Their mothers were less than impressed when the girls told them how much they wanted to be sluts when they got to high school. When I was younger my house was messy and my mum only ever cleaned on special occasions and that was only certain rooms people were allowed in. I always thought this was completely normal. We had wine boxes holding up our couch and shoved right up our chimney, which was covered by a fire screen. Our kitchen smelled of mold and rotting food, the benches and floors were covered in the source of the smell and other unidentifiable objects. My clothes used to sit in a washing basket so long after they were washed that they would start to grow fuzz. There was one room beside mine which was so overpacked with rubbish and toys that I could barely crack the door open. It was just filthy overall. No one ever saw this though, and if they did I can only imagine that my mum would have lost custody of me immediately, and I think she knew that. I lived like that until I was 12, and I didn't really understand what was happening until recently when watching an episode of Hoarders. 
It's kind of messed me up. I can't sleep unless my house is spotless and I constantly have panic attacks if I forget to clean something before leaving the house. I was in first grade and my mom was late to pick me up from school. So as I'm sitting in the front office waiting, there is this weird older lady sitting across the room from me, maybe mid to late 40s, and she's smiling at me, playfully trying to get my attention. I was a super shy kid, just didn't really say anything and looked away. The secretary for the office sees this exchange and a weird lady chuckles and says, oh he's so shy, as if she knows me. A couple minutes more of this awkwardness. Then the weird lady stands up, grabs her purse, walks over and grabs my hand, and says, we'll just have to come back another time sweetie and starts walking me out of the office. At this point I'm still confused, I haven't even said a word to this woman, but my 6, 7 year old self didn't necessarily feel enough panic to speak up. The office secretary knows something is up, maybe she even knew who my mom was. Just as the weird lady is leading me out the door, secretary says that I was student of the week and I need to get my picture taken. I remember how tight of a grip the weird lady had on my hand, and how angry she looked when the secretary quickly pulled me away. I was led into a back hallway, where I saw the secretary whisper something to my principal. I still remember the look on his face too. I now recognize that look as a mixture of like, anger, but relief. Anyway, woman had escaped from a low security mental facility and was off her meds. Drove to the most remote elementary school she could find in the Phoenix area to escape into the desert with me apparently. I didn't have an understanding of that day's events until years later. TL. Doctor almost kidnapped from my school by a mental woman when I was 6. I remember being 10 or 11 where we acted as reading buddies and doing general guidance stuff for kids in kindergarten. One day we were talking about bullying and one of the kids mentioned something he'd seen that day. Apparently he witnessed a group of kids force a kid into a barrel and roll him down a hill. All I could think about was how humiliating that must have been for that kid. Fast forward to last year and I'm awake late at night trying to get to sleep. Now as for most people every thought goes through my head possible, right when I don't need it to, I thought about the time helping the kids and stuff. Suddenly it finally hit me that he had seen me and my friends putting that kid in the trash can that day. The reason I'd never made the connection before now was because he had wanted to go in the trash can. All day we'd been challenging each other to do bigger and stupider stunts. This kid had requested we put him into this big barrel, cause he was a short guy, and then roll him down the hill. In retrospect we probably should've just put the barrel on its side, but at the time we were stupid little craps trying to be the next jackass crew so logic. Other than being dizzy though he was okay as far as I recall. It had never even crossed my mind that somebody would see that and think we were bullying some kid really told me a lot about how sometimes your actions can look different from somebody else's perspective.